So this video is for Shane, but I, I want to make a video response so that other people can, it, a lot of people are going to be in a similar situation. So Shane asked, I want to put an indoor sauna on patio. We've got adequate, you know, rain coverage from the eaves and everything else. The setback is far enough to where you wouldn't have splashing rain, sun damage or anything like that. Biggest thing with indoor saunas is they don't really have a weatherproof roof structure. So if you get any moisture down in through the top, it's going to get into the electronics, right? And so like on a, a day like today where it's below 30 degrees, <clears throat> if you have, if you put something in a, in an area that is adjoined to a heat source, you also could have some condensing. So those are things to take into account with sauna placement. Obviously it depends on your climate. You know, if I was in Florida right now, we would have a different conversation. But as it pertains to electrical, <clears throat> one of the biggest questions was, there's a GFCI on the circuit. I have adequate circuit. He has a 20 amp circuit, wants to put a sauna on the patio. <clears throat> and a lot of people are in this position, right? And so if you have a G, so I'm gonna give you a couple different scenarios to answer the question so that you have more context um, to understand if it becomes a problem, is it fixable or is it a big deal, right? And so here's the thing. If you have a GFCI outlet, right, where you wanna hook up your sauna, it is both not a problem and a problem. So it's not a problem because just having a GFCI doesn't really inherently mean anything. You could hook up any sauna that you want to it, right? And I'm gonna throw AFCI breakers in here too, since a lot of people have those for new code requirements. Um, <clears throat> the biggest problem with GFCIs is if you were to, you can't see it in here, but you'll see when I do the electrical for this build, um, when you install a GFCI and you put a sauna in front of it, if it's a complicated sauna to install or if it's a big sauna and you happen to trip the outlet, it's a pain in the neck to either move the sauna or get your arm back there <clears throat> in order to reset the little test reset button on top on, on the outlet. So this can be problematic in a couple ways. Uh, to save money, sometimes contractors will install a single GFCI on a shared circuit, either in parallel or series. And so you can have an outlet that you think is dead or doesn't work or your sauna has an issue with. And on the other side of the wall inside the house or in a bathroom or something, there could be a GFCI tripped because instead of, <clears throat> you know, separating those circuits and doing a home run, you know, for that particular room, they just added it to another one that was GFCI protected. So can that become an issue? Sure. Is it a big deal? Not really. As long as the circuit that is GFCI protected, if you have other... Um, wet work areas, which generally you don't, but it depends on the build. There's always, you know, use cases where this is incorrect. But if you have wet environments that need to be protected by a GFCI and they are sharing a circuit in series or parallel with another area, and that's the area you want to put the sauna and you take that receptacle out, right? You replace it with a standard outlet. Then you're thereby eliminating the protection from the other areas. So I just want you to be aware of that. Is that the case always? Absolutely not is more often than not, can you get away with it and you still have you know, adequate protection? Yes. If you're not sure about this, obviously you wanna consult with a local electrician, have them take a look at it. The next thing to talk about is AFCI breakers, right? And so AFCI breakers, if you search electrician forums, these are becoming more and more common uh, code requirements in a lot of areas. So your rehabs, your new builds, all this, probably gonna be loaded with AFCI breakers. Sometimes certain saunas don't play nice when you plug them into an AFCI circuit. And so there's a couple ways to remedy that. It's not the end of the world. Everyone freaks out and they're like, oh my God, I'm gonna be having a sauna that I can't use. Uh, I live in an apartment or a condo and you know, we're not allowed to change this or electrician won't do it because this is code and yada, yada, yada. But if you search electrician forums, you will find phantom tripping of AFCI breakers becoming more and more of an issue, even in brand new houses. I mean, circuits are tripping with like a vacuum cleaner plugged into it or for no reason at all. And so when you have capacitors and transistors before the transformer or before the power supply in the um, sauna, sometimes that can also trigger, you know, phantom tripping. So the solution there is to obviously swap out that breaker to a traditional breaker. And people are all worried and saying, you know, oh, you don't have the same fire protection and everything else. But guys, houses would be burning down. And, you know, I can't give you electrician, licensed electrician advice, because I'm not one. I can't give you that for your situation without seeing your house, seeing your panel, seeing the situation. So don't listen to some guy on the internet, but I can tell you after doing this hundreds of times and helping with, you know, hundreds, literally hundreds of cases of people being in this position, you have the option to get a hold of an electrician that, you know, is a little bit more, 
uh, has a, a wider knowledge base in dealing with these things. Because right now we have new home builds, brand new 2024 builds with loaded with AFCI breakers and people are having to swap those out because some of their appliances are not working correctly. You know, they go to bed and wake up in the morning and the breakers are off, right? Well, the same thing can happen with a sauna or anything you plug into it. And so I can tell you what I would do. <clears throat> if I'm in that situation in the past, if I've rented a condo or I've leased a space, you know, to use as an office or anything like this, I've swapped out that breaker for a regular square D breaker, or G, whatever the panel is, right? Uh, and have had zero issues, the thing that you want to be careful of and don't listen to these idiots on the internet that are trying to sell you saunas that are not adequately where your circuit is not adequately sized right to power the damn thing so you do not under any circumstances go to a 15 amp breaker in a panel trace back uh you know a 14 2 line or something that has a hundred foot run you know, in a wall and think that you can just put a 20 amp receptacle on that 14, 200 foot line and swap the 15 amp breaker for a 20, right? People <clears throat> that are advising sauna customers to do this are putting their family at risk, right? If the wire is not adequately sized right in the wall for the length of the run and the draw that you're gonna have on it, amperage, wattage, all of the above, you absolutely need to consult an electrician and either have that line replaced. And this is a big giant disclaimer, right? This isn't actually, I'm throwing a lot of stuff in this bucket because these are things that people need to consider. It's not just, you know, this one person's situation, but I want to make absolute certain that if somebody sees this video and we're talking about GFCI and AFCI breakers and sizing lines to hook up saunas and doing, I keep looking over because I'm running circuits and stuff. You'll see them in the build videos, but I'm running the very circuits that we're talking about. And you can see the home run directly to the panel, which circuits are dedicated and how they're set up, how the wire is sized, what type of breaker, you know, at capacity that could, uh, you know, provide. And so when you, when you just see a guy on YouTube, right? And this, there's not a whole lot of things that really get me fired up, but this is one of them that does. When you see a guy on YouTube that says, oh yeah, you can just get a 15 to 20 amp adapter or you can just, you know, check your panel and swap out the, the outlet, right? Just take out the 15 amp outlet, even if it's GFCI or non-GFCI and put a 20 amp in there and then you can order whatever sauna you want and hook it up. Guys, if the wire in the wall is not adequately sized for that, you will melt it. I'm gonna say it again. If the wire in the wall is not adequately sized for stepping up, you know, a circuit consumption, you are going to melt it. Now, hopefully it melts at the breaker inside the panel. That would be nice. Hopefully it still trips. But at the same time, you, you cannot follow this advice. Don't go out and buy a $7,000 sauna that needs a 20 amp breaker or even a $3,000 large sauna from a big box retailer like Best Buy, Costco, using part, points, credit card points on Amazon or Home Depot or wherever, right? And then skimp on a $500 circuit that could potentially burn your house down. Listening to these idiots on YouTube talking about, oh, use this adapter, da, da, da. They're just doing this because they want to sell you something and they don't really care about the ramifications. They just want you to buy today, right? And so obviously I would never do that for myself. So I wouldn't want to tell you to do it. Hell, I don't like to tell you to do things that I do for myself that are sketch. So I just want to make this abundantly clear. This is all kind of lumped into one, AFCI, GFCI breakers. But at the end of the day, Cliff Notes, you know, kind of summarized, I don't think this is a huge issue. It, when it's been an issue for me, like I'll tell you what I do. I can't tell you what to do, but I can tell you exactly what I do. If I have a larger sauna, like if that's a four person sauna that I know I'm gonna install and there's a GFCI outlet behind it, I do a quick check. I wanna make sure there's nothing else on that shared circuit. You can go flip the breaker off and do a little pin test or you can plug stuff in and, and check it manually if that's your, your deal. But basically, I wanna make sure that it's not providing protection to an adjacent room right? Whether correctly or incorrectly. I just want to know up front. And then I swap that outlet out, right? Because I don't want to have to move the entire sauna before, you know, I can reset the button if it happens to trip. And, and to me, these are dry saunas. This is not a wet work environment, right? You're not pouring five gallon bucket of water in the floor and standing in it. So there's really no reason, contrary to what a lot of people say, there's no reason to have um, a GFCI outlet to protect the sauna per se. Right. Sure, you could come up with some obscure use case where, yeah, it might be a good idea. But for like 999% of the time, I just come up with that by myself. <laughs> Basically all the time, 
right? It's not really doing much, in my opinion, in my experience for me. So I swap the outlet out. And then I buy saunas and hook them up to AFCI breakers. If it becomes a problem, then I worry about it in the future, right? If, it, if I get an issue with phantom tripping, which you can have, sauna or not, some other device or not, um, I buy the sauna, or I, I'm, I'm sorry, I hook the sauna up anyway, and then if it becomes an issue, I just swap that breaker out for something that's non-problematic. Obviously, I'm doing all these other things like sizing the line correctly. If it's an existing circuit, you know, checking to make sure it can support whatever load I'm putting on it with headroom, you know, always 80% headroom. Any electrician will share this, you know, with you. Um, and then it, the only thing to consider is, you know, if you're, if you're in a condo, a townhouse or something where there is like HOA or anything that prohibits uh, modification or, or things like that, um, you know, you want to make sure that it's something that you can easily swap back. Or if it is problematic, you want to make sure that you select a sauna or piece of equipment that that um, isn't going to pose you an issue there or force you into upgrading electrical when you're not really, you know, able to. Uh, I bring that up because in some townhouses, the HOA will not allow you to install exterior conduit, even if it's buried. So, Meaning if your panel is on one side of the garage, you have a little townhouse with a one car garage and then it's like a three, two or, you know, two upstairs, one down, whatever. The common layout for these builds, we see it every single week because people are in this situation. They're like, oh, what do I do? So your panel's at the garage door, you know, and it's a front to back layout. You come in through the garage, you're in the kitchen living area, and then you may have one master suite downstairs. The rest of the stuff is upstairs. Most likely where you want to put the sauna is upstairs. And so ripping out drywall just to run a line is an enormous expense and it's going to screw up your daily living for a little while. It just makes a hell of a mess. So the smart thing to do is to trench around the house, bury a line, a supply line that's dedicated to your biohacking room, your wellness studio, whatever you know you have set up for yourself or, or wanting to do. And then you basically conduit it up and hide it. You know, you either build it in, it depends. Like if you have a stucco place, obviously it's gonna be really difficult. It would have to be exposed and color matched or something like that. And the HOA is gonna have a fit, you know, sometimes. So I understand, I'm trying to package up all these different individual needs and use cases into one video so that when people say, you know, oh, what about this? What about that? What about da, 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 da? We could just point them to this video and say, you know, I know it's 10 minutes long. It answers the question, but there's also reference points built into the video that are safety precautions for you to understand so that whether you're hiring an electrician or not hiring an electrician, you can at least look at your own place and have a good idea if someone is full of shit or, you know, feeding you a bunch of lines or just trying to get you to, to purchase something that's really not right for you. And ultimately, you know, what I want to make sure of is that you and your family are safe. You're not putting your house or anything at risk. I mean, I can only imagine what like, I don't know what goes through some of these people's minds that make these videos that say, oh yeah, you know, use this adapter or swap out a 15 to 20 amp outlet. And, you know, <clears throat> let's sell you a sauna that has a 16, not a 16, like a 2600, 2800 dedicated uh, power supply in it, right? That's going to draw 18 amps, right? And the, oh yeah, we can just swap a 15 amp outlet and, and, and put a 20 amp, you know, adapter and you can plug it right in. Guys, nowhere in the history of the universe does a power supply or a piece of equipment like that that has that type of draw going to be adequate for a line unless it's upsized which is rare you know a lot of you know contractors are not doing that these days um with 80 percent headroom it's just not there so it is a potential fire risk i would be way you can tell and that's the other reason to do this and, and to go into detail is that you can tell i would be a lot more worried about undersized lines or using adapters or doing this or doing that or finagling things to make something work that you really shouldn't be making work. You should do it the right way. I would be 500 times, 500X, way more concerned about that than I would someone swapping out a GFCI outlet to use a dry sauna that's a non-wet sauna. Like, I don't see any issue with that. Electricians, please comment. Comment down below. If there is a potential issue with that, cite it. By all means, I mean, our 100% priority is safety. It's not trying to get people to, to finagle, you know, or do anything shady. Um, and I would be way more worried about doing those things than I would be not having an, a code required AFCI breaker also to a non-wet environment, you know, appliance or something like that. So I'm going to end the video here. We can make follow-ups. There's going to be electrical tutorials in the build series. I mean, you can see I'm standing in the construction project right now, okay? 
So it's not like, we're not just talking about this on the internet, like some of the videos that you see and they order an extension cord adapter that's 15 to 20 amp and they say to plug that into your outlet and then buy whatever 3000 watt power supply sauna that you want and just hook it up, it'll be fine. Okay, <laughs> we're doing what we're talking about, number one, and have been for years, just don't showcase it. But you can literally see, I'm, in, I'm doing this for you in the construction project so that you get the context and you're gonna see me run these lines you're going to see me talk about sizing them because I want people to know. I mean, this is so much more important for your family's safety than anything else that you can consider, like choosing the right sauna heater and do I need red light therapy or full spec, you know, all this crap. This is something that is super, super important. And I want to make sure that we're on top of it 100% so that you get what you need. All right. We'll see you in the next video.